John Gresham was good enough yesterday to uh, be flexible with us in lieu of our breaking news. He joins us here today uh, as we uh, have linked up with him via the Skype. He's just outside of the nation's capital. Good morning, John. Hello, Pat. Hope you're doing well. Uh, the president yesterday, around the time that we were covering our breaking news here involving the governor's cabinet, we had a deal uh, where the uh, the president speaking, I believe it was at American University, uh, a couple of the, the, I don't know if you call them high notes, but a couple of things I took from this. One, the accusation uh, that anybody who is uh, against this deal, Republicans chiefly, are in collusion with radical Iranians. And... Um, that Iran will, if this deal's not done, which, again, the president doesn't need this uh, to be approved by Congress for this to happen, but if the deal, or if Congress doesn't approve this uh, Iranian nuclear deal, they'll get nu- nuclear weapons in six months. I thought it was two to three years. Why? How did the timetable speed up so quickly? I think there may be some cooking of <laughs> facts but uh no disturbing. the books yeah, got then, cooked on that on that statement no well there's always a range of possibilities that the intelligence community gives you from six months to two years <clears throat> as they've been trying to sell this they've normally been saying the two-year mark but now that he's feeling a little pressure to get this done uh he's using the six-month mark to go ahead and frighten everyone and frankly um uh, I think there's more than a few Republicans over on the Hill who don't appreciate the metaphorical comparison between opposition to this deal to treason, which I think is rather objectionable. There are some reports that this is going to happen in Congress, and then there are other reports that Democrats are jumping off this thing like a sinking uh, ship. Uh, What are you what have you heard up there in the reportage up there? and, And where do you where do you believe this is heading? Again, it doesn't need congressional approval for this to happen. Uh, well, yeah, it kind of does. Well, uh, it's more of a legacy play there, John, I mean, to be honest with you, for, for the president. It's more of a legacy play. I mean, the U.N.'s approved the thing it's going through. But wh- where do you think this is going with Congress ultimately? Well, I think that Congress will probably go and turn it down initially. But then there's the question of the override and can the uh, uh, overriding the veto that the president will put on the bill. Um, I think there's a chance he could lose that one, and if he does, it's bad. It'll all come down in the end probably to one individual, and that is Senator Chuck Schumer from New York. It's clearly understood that when Harry Reid goes and retires at the end of this term that Senator Schumer is probably going to be the likely uh, uh, Democratic Senate leader, Mm -hmm. but I'm sure there is more than a little bit of concern on uh, Schumer's part of if he supports the president, uh, does he does he look weak? And if he doesn't support the president, does he get that job? Yeah, that he wants? that's an interesting it, point. It really it's a, is. It's a hard question. And, yeah. Um, what I would hope is that Chuck Schumer, who I consider to be a pretty sharp individual in a lot of ways. <clears throat> I hope he will go the way he feels he wants to go, because in the end, politics is one thing, but collusion is another. And right now you're seeing both being played out, not necessarily at their best over this matter. Two things to note here. Uh, One, both chambers need two-thirds majority in order to to turn this away. And there was just a uh, a scroll here on one of the news networks, I think CNN, reporting that the uh, negotiator has left... uh, uh, a post at the Pentagon, uh, uh, one of the nego- Iran nuclear negotiators has left their post. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. CBS will be watching it, I'm sure. Uh, all of this is happening yesterday, John, with the backdrop that Iran has pointed a weapon at U.S. aircraft? Yeah, the uh, an Iranian frigate off the coast uh, there uh, pointed uh, it, its weapon systems both at a U.S. ship and at a... Uh, uh, U.S. aircraft, and this happens at sea quite a bit, but in this particular case, one would think if you were trying to play nice in the middle of a uh, process like this, you wouldn't want to be going and acting hostile, but the Iranians have continued to be hostile and nasty, not just to us, but to everybody. It's like they seem to feel that this 
this nuclear deal with the P5 plus one is somehow a birthright. And what they fail to understand is, is that in the end, uh, they're lucky they get to wake up in the morning and have air the way they behave. John Gresham, best-selling military author, military historian, uh, joining us here on a Thursday. It was good enough to uh, uh, adjust his uh, schedule to be on with us here in lieu of the breaking news we were bringing you uh, yesterday during the 11 o'clock hour. John, uh, to change uh, topics a little bit here, it's the 70th anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima. Yes, it is. 70 years ago today, a... Uh, B-29 called Enola Gay, which now resides in at the Udvar Hazy facility at Dulles Airport of the National Air and Space Museum, piloted by a gentleman by the name of uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Paul Tibbetts, dropped the very first uh, nuclear weapon uh, dropped in combat. It was a uranium bomb called Little Boy on the uh, port and uh, industrial city of Hiroshima. Uh, uh, Estimates vary, but something between 60 and 70,000 people were killed in uh, by the blast. And when a second bomb uh, was dropped on Nagasaki several days later, it caused the uh, Japanese to go ahead and offer their surrender. Uh, it's one of the strange ironies that today Colonel Tibbetts' grandson commands the exact same bomber unit, the 509th Bomber bomb wing uh, out at Whiteman Air Force Base uh, in uh, Missouri, uh, which flies the B-2 bomber. It's, uh, like I say, they, it, it, if you don't, if you, if you don't read the history and you don't realize that these things actually do happen, you wouldn't believe it. John Gresham is uh, with us. You, you're a noted historian and have written books on a myriad of, of topics as far as military national security and uh, and otherwise go take us back how much consideration uh was there by the u.s and just remind everyone of that i mean th this was not done lightly or or was this was, was just take us back to that period of time the well, decision to drop the bomb the the decision to drop the bomb ultimately was a presidential one uh the decision to go and build the bomb uh under something called the manhattan program was started by Franklin Roosevelt, and several days after he died, Harry Truman was informed by Secretary of War Stimson and uh, uh, General George Marshall, the Army Chief of Staff, of the existence of the program. And that started a whole process of deciding, one, whether to drop the bomb, and two, where to drop the bomb. The targeting uh question was a huge issue. In the end, for example, uh, the city of Kyoto was taken off of the target list. Uh, they wanted to go and attack targets which had not been firebombed previously so that they could get a better evaluation of what the bombs would do in a combat role. But uh, uh, the decision was made to take Kyoto off because of its cultural and religious significance. And there were already concerns about what we would be, what kind of relationship we would have with Japan in the post-war world. And yes, there were objections by any number of people, including some of the scientists who built it, to dropping the bomb. In the end, President Truman made the decision after the successful test at Alamogordo, New Mexico, to drop the bomb. The first two units were delivered to the island of Tinian and the 509th Composite Group, which flew B-29s there. Uh, Tibbets flew the first mission 70 years ago today. Uh, several days later, a second mission flown by a B-29 called Boxcar. Uh, that aircraft, by the way, is in the museum, Air Force Museum in Dayton dropped a second bomb, and that shocked the Japanese into going ahead and offering their surrender. John Gresham with us. John, uh, got a little over a minute here, so we got to be quick with this. Uh, the WTI and Brent prices. Down again, uh, full dollar in just a day. WTI is at 44, and Brent is down to 49 and dropping. We don't know where the – we honestly don't know where it's going to bottom out. Uh, most analysts would say somewhere around 43, but who knows at this point. Great to always uh, speak with you, John, and uh, we'll talk to you very, very soon. Looking forward to it. Maybe tomorrow. You, you never know. know. <laughs> you never know. Talk to you later. Enjoy the debate tonight. You'll be glued to your TV, I'm sure. Uh, don't bet on it. <laughs>
<laughs> John Gresham. Great to speak to you, John. Thanks.